in the world, I feel like. <laughs> Good morning. Thank you. Good to be here. It's incredible to see you. City Council meeting was, was fabulous last night. And yeah, it was. It's amazing to see our city leaders working so hard into the night. I mean, your devotion and dedication just uh, warms my heart. And uh, on behalf of the entire city, thank you for your service and all that you do. Thank you. And likewise to you, Catherine. Well, we are glad that we have a beautiful day this morning. And we are at the West Des Moines Chamber of Commerce's brand new series. We just started this during COVID. We wanted to reinvent, think of some new ways we can help reach our audiences, our small businesses to help during this critical time, especially. This is a super crazy time. This is my first pandemic and I have a feeling it's everybody's first pandemic. So, um, so you know, what can we do to really help our community? And so the Business Survival Toolkit is an incredible series. Uh, that's helped to identify ways that we can help our small businesses right now. We want to thank especially our sponsors, Arion and Security National Bank, for supporting this series. This is our sixth in a series. And, you know, I really feel like we've struck a nerve. We've had so many attendees at these events. You know, you never know when you're starting a new program how, you know, how it's going to go. But uh, we are taping today, so if you miss something, if your pen is not working fast enough when you're taking notes, hearing from these amazing experts, we are recording. So this will be on YouTube for uh, everybody afterwards. So on behalf of the entire West Des Moines Chamber of Commerce community, we really want to thank you for being here this morning. Um, so just a little bit technical. Um, you can choose speaker view or you can choose the gallery view. So if you wanna have our expert panelists be on the virtual stage today, just click on your upper right-hand corner for speaker view. It's fabulous uh, to do that. I'd like to introduce our stellar expert chamber team who make all of this programming possible. They are really the engine that drives everything we do. I am just the, uh, the person that, that steers the boat. So today running our program is Bailey First. So she is, helping everybody come in right now. And she's our social media marketing and event expert. And uh, we have Kara Matheson, who is our director of workforce. And she is in charge of the West Des Moines Leadership Academy, which we are almost in full swing on that. So that's gonna be starting soon. I hope you saw those announcements. Uh, we have Nicole Langmaid, who is our operations, IT, uh, everything, systems, analysts, you name it. And uh, she just had our, our, first, our second survey out. And if you haven't seen the results of our second survey, do go online at wdmchamber.org to look at those results. And Anna Dowd is our Director of Membership and Strategic Partnerships. And uh, she is our communication line to so many of our chamber esteemed members. So, you know, at the West Des Moines Chamber, our vision is to make West Des Moines the best suburban city in America to live, work, and play. And everything we do is around that programming. You know, our goals right now, especially because of COVID, are to keep our businesses in business, keep our employees employed and do everything we can to help keep our region strong. And the Business Survival Toolkit is one of those programs that helps to keep our region strong. You know, every day, what we do is we do all we can to support our area businesses and community, especially now. This is interesting. We have 700 plus members and we're growing. 165 of those members have been a chamber member for 10 years or more. That's incredible. What a legacy. We are also celebrating our 96 year anniversary. So we have another 100 years to go. And uh, it's an incredible uh, time to be here at the chamber. And I'm just feel blessed to, to be, you know, helping steer the ship. So again, thank you for your support. Thank you for being here this morning. I'm excited to introduce our sponsors. And our first sponsor is Arian. And I'd like to bring to the podium Sarah Vanderhart, who is Arian's manager of marketing, planning, and operations. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Catherine, and thank you to the West Des Moines Chamber for continuing the Business Survival Toolkit. We truly appreciate all the efforts that are being put in um, to execute this engaging series. 
for our community and our area businesses. So as Catherine mentioned, my name is Sarah Vanderhart and I am the manager of marketing, planning and operations at Arian. Later on, you will hear from my colleague, Damaris McKee, who is our manager of client experience and strategy. So for those of you that are not familiar with Arian, Arian is a local technology solutions provider located right here in West Des Moines, and we serve the entire Midwest. Um, for, the, for more than 30 years, connectivity has been driven, has driven our business, and it is woven into the network of solutions that we offer our clients. So Arian has you covered from network connectivity, data and voice communications, managed IT, um, contact center support, as well as project management. Um, so we are absolutely committed to connecting our area businesses to the experts and tools that they need right now and really drive home that success for them and allow them to grow their business, communicate and gain their efficiencies while working securely from anywhere at any time. So Catherine, I will turn it back to you. Thank you so much, Sarah. And again, thank you for all of your support of this series. It's uh, been an incredible ride, hasn't it? It's been, uh, yes, it's been it amazing. Has. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Sarah. I am now excited to introduce our second sponsor of this amazing series, Security National Bank. And here to highlight Security National Bank is Dylan Dinkla. Good morning. Uh, thank you, Catherine. Uh, as Catherine mentioned, my name is Dylan Dinkla. I'm a trust officer with Security National Bank here at Jordan Creek. Uh, Security National Bank is a family owned bank out of Omaha, Nebraska, uh, founded in the 1960s and the founding uh, family still runs it to this day. Uh, we are new to West Des Moines, so if you haven't heard of us yet, uh, that's okay. We're new to West Des Moines, but we actually have had a presence in the market for uh, the past five years. And uh, that actually is five years today because that's when my first day was uh, and I was I was a patient zero, if you will. So uh, five years ago, the wealth management division uh, within the bank decided to branch out uh, to expand its reach for traditional trust and estate administration, as well as investment management and uh, 401k administration. Uh, our office was in the downtown financial center. That operation started with me, uh, but from there we developed enough business that uh, the bank, uh, the larger bank, uh, opened a lo uh, loan production office uh, in the same location, and that was about three years ago. Uh, earlier this year, we moved out of downtown and into our present location uh, here at Jordan Creek Parkway, uh, full service operation uh, from wealth management, loans, business banking, and, and retail. Um, as I mentioned, I am on the wealth management side, so I deal exclusively with trust and estate administration uh, and investment management. Uh, we also offer third party 401k administration services to small businesses, most notably uh, professional offices like law firms and medical practices. If uh, you have a small business and uh, you have a 401k uh, and need, uh, need some advice, uh, I'd like to maybe speak with, uh, speak with a corporate fiduciary on something like that, we'd be happy to help you out. Uh, the bank itself it, uh, offers most traditional services you would expect at, the, at a bank, loans, private banking, business banking. Um, but one thing I would like to highlight is that we are uh, one of only a handful of banks in the entire state that are participating in the Main Street Lending Program, which was started earlier this year in response to COVID. Uh, I'm not going to pretend to be an expert uh, on that subject, but uh, Ray and Eric in our office uh, uh, they please contact them. They'll be happy to work with you on it. Um, so if any of those services uh, interest you or your business, uh, please contact us or uh, better yet, come see us. Uh, it's, it, naturally with COVID, we haven't had as much walk-ins as you would expect, as uh, we would have expected, but our lobby is open uh, and we are lo located right in front of uh, Hobby Lobby right on Jordan Creek Parkway. Um, with that, thank you for your time and allowing us to sponsor the presentation. Thank you so much, Dylan, and thank you for all your hard work during the pandemic and the PPP, West Des Moines. Luckily, our small businesses, our medium businesses, we, we took the lion's share of some of that funding, and that's because our financial institutions really stepped in very quickly to help. So thank you for all the work on behalf of that. I know you guys have uh, 
there in the, the beginning, you weren't getting a lot of sleep. And I know uh, maybe you're getting a little bit more sleep since uh, that PPP activity has slowed down a little bit. So thank you so much, Dylan, for your support. I am so excited to introduce our expert panelists today. We have Brandon Bingham, Terrence Thames, Mark Hollander, Therese Wilagi, Damaris McKee, Mark Danes. I mean, this is going to be an incredible. So everybody's going to have about seven minutes to impart their words of wisdom on marketing communications right now. And right now, you know, here's, here's some questions. Like, how do you separate yourself from what everybody else is doing in your sector? How do you position yourself online to be truly unique? Um, how do you stand out? What are some tips and tools for businesses of all sizes? So today we have the experts and let me tell you, this is gonna be amazing. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take it away. I am so excited to introduce Brandon Bingham, who's owner of Big Bang, to impart his words of wisdom on how to market during COVID and beyond. So here we go. Thank you very much. Thanks to the West Des Moines Chamber for having us today. This is a really cool series. So I'm going to share my screen real quick. Here we go. All right. There's a, there's a screen going right there. So we got everything. Now let's rock and roll. So um, as the West Des Moines Chamber just kind of introduced us, um, we are the experts, but I think we're all living this pandemic for the first time. So it's pretty interesting as we go through it. Um, I am the founder um, of Bing Bang. And so I started it in 2014. So still kind of new to all this, um, relatively new um, in West Des Moines here. Um, Bing Bang, we love to be different. So let me just throw this here. So here at Bing Bang, we love to be different. Um, we love to just kind of stand out in the crowd. So that's kind of fun uh, topic to talk about today. We have all kinds of different, you know, tactics to, to really how we can kind of hit everything. But ultimately, what we love to do is we love to have our clients win. So that, that's what we look to do. Um, the topic today, how can we then kind of look to how you can not only survive, but how can you thrive? And so one of the first things that I see a lot of people doing here within the pandemic has been you know, kind of changing everything or reinventing the wheel. And so with all this, how can you stay the course? Right now, obviously, we're all in the same boat where it's hard to predict what's next. But we've seen it all firsthand. You know, in our case, like we were having an amazing year, our best year ever. Um, and in the middle of March, it felt like our legs were completely cut out from underneath us. And it was like, what do we do? And, and so immediately that knee jerk reaction is freak out you know, and, and what do you do? How do you do? And so what's next? And so then we all as business owners, we want to protect the future. We want to be able to control and we, we lost all prediction. We lost all control. And so a lot of people then decided to just kind of go away from everything. But as things have continued and we balance business, we balance our personal safety, our, our staff safety, and, and we've just kind of tried to figure out that balance is maybe even more important to lead and show and share your vision. And so stay the course, stay in that mode of like, how can you share your vision and how can you share it even more vividly and clear and like take some of this time that you have to like kind of put it all together to where everybody's on the same page. So now is the opportunity more than ever to make sure that you continue to, you know, find that vision, define it, and then share it all throughout your staff. So then the next thing is um, be bold and share your story. Don't get caught flat-footed. That's what a lot of this is. It's like we all were on our toes. We were ready to rock and roll. March Madness was postponed, and we all just felt like our world was over. And so then at that point, we kind of all took a big, deep breath. And I know I did collectively. You know, those first couple of weeks, it was like, what do you do? Where do you go? And then what we did at Bing Bang was we decided to continue to try to reinvent. So recreate, not really reinvent, but recreate. So how can we then share our story out? How can we then find different places that like that were actually an opportunity instead of like a burden? And so as we continue to try to do that, we were, I truly believe right now we're going to see the company that pushed forward to share their story will be even further ahead during these challenging times. And so I've seen it in our own world um, and in our clients world, the teams that have kind of united and came together are the teams that are actually going to be stronger on the backside of this. And so, Right now is the time to be bold and, and share your story. 
try to keep it fast. I've been known to like go 30 minutes without even like letting somebody else speak. So I'm trying to get through in seven minutes. Um, the other thing is just truly keep it simple. In this time, it, we want to try to do everything at once. We want to try to like be crazy, be creative, be all, you know, and you got so many different inputs. We've got just things spir spir spiraling from everywhere. And so at Bing Bang, one of the things that we'd like to do, um, especially in these challenging times, is to truly just keep it simple. Identify your end game. What's your goal? What's your rock? What do you truly want to achieve? So are you looking for new customers? Is this making sure customers and clients know who you are? Is this retaining or recruiting talent? Like, what is your goal? Make sure you clearly define that goal so then you can kind of work backwards from that goal. And then whatever that challenge is, just make sure that you're listening to solve that goal. Then when we move into the create stage, how can we solve and create something that stands out that speaks to the culture and the brand of your business? The old way of standing on top of that mountain, like we've all done it, right? Like, hey, buy our service, we're up here, we're awesome. Like, that doesn't work anymore. Like, how can you do it in a new, fun, engaging, emotion-evoking way? So we wanna genuinely tell your story. We wanna do it in an effective, creative way that engages and evokes that emotion. Then you must deliver, right? So you do all this, then let's deliver. Let's find that target audience. And I think more than ever now, we have to meet them where they're at. Like we don't, we can't just expect them to be at the mall, at this, or wherever that they may have been at the state fair, which we are all missing right now. Um, it's one of those things where we have to find where our audience lives right now. We have to find new creative ways to get into it and we have to, we have to meet them where they're at. So now is, now is the time more than ever. Um, everybody's unsure. A lot of us are unconfident through this. Um, the time, the effort, the blood, the sweat, the tears that you put into um, can be shared in that clear vision. Like take those vulnerable stages that you live in right now and put them into your vision. Like take this as an opportunity, as a moment to really like reflect and share why you're so proud of what you have and why customers should engage in activity with you. And so use this as a moment to share what makes you, you like what, what makes you special, what differentiates you now is the moment to create the business you've always wanted. Tell your story and let everyone else know who you are. Um, thank you guys for this opportunity. I tried to go really fast. Um, but if uh, it wasn't micro machine fast, but then if you guys ever have any other questions or you'd like to engage offline or, you know, even at the end of this, hopefully we'll have some questions, but uh, thank you for the opportunity to share a little bit about what Bing Bang is kind of doing through the survival of COVID-19. Thank you so much, Brandon. Really, really appreciate it. I love the big, bold evoke emotion. That is so true. I mean, that's how somebody is going to really be attracted to your brand. Does it strike to the heart? Do they get a feeling? Yes, I love that. The storytelling around that's so nice. And say, missing the state fair. Oh, wow. Yeah, this is hard, right? This is, this is really hard. Well, thank you so much, Brandon. That was, that was super wonderful. So I am now excited to introduce our second expert panelist. Terrence Thames, who is CEO, Creative Director of Coco Creative Agency. Take it away, Terrence. Yeah, yeah, thanks for having me. This is great. I'm excited and um, I'm gonna share my screen here very quickly, but I want to just first encourage everybody, you know, in the middle of all this stuff going on, there's so many changes, so many things. And uh, it's, uh, it can be hard, people get depressed and in business, um, you have the task of not only wanting to meet your own needs, meet your own expectations, but also come through for other clients. So um, just be encouraged. And so I have a few slides here. It's gonna, I'm going to take you through a few things that I believe are very important that have also corresponded to part of the success uh, for our part of the reason for our success. So our secret sauce, right? These are some things as a part of, that are a part of our secret sauce. Um, also, um, I have a lot of great images to hopefully just pep you up this morning. Beautiful black people. I'm an unashamed black man, and we're going to have some black positivity going on in this, uh, my presentation. So 
full disclosure, you know. <laughs> so first thing um, I want to say is in terms of um, a marketing uh, business toolkit, the first thing you want to do is really double down on yourself. You know, uh, whether you are an entrepreneur, and I'm speaking to entrepreneurs. Now, I know we have also corporate members on this call, and I would say, you know, you can be a very good entrepreneur, right? Understand who, uh, what your business is, what your corporation is, but double down on yourself. Um, be sure in who you are, um, but also you don't have to necessarily change for anybody. You know, every business is unique. As an entrepreneur, you are unique. You have unique gifts. So uh, lean in on those gifts. And of course, in business, we call that a unique value proposition. But I think it's very important to understand what makes you special. Just like we tell our children, you're special. But what makes you special? Explain that to your children, but explain that to other people in the market. Uh, explain why you, um, what makes you you. And you don't have to try to be somebody else. Be yourself, okay? Double down on yourself, first thing. Second thing, let me come over here to my second. Oh, one moment here, we're gonna go manually, boom. Second thing, build self-confidence. She looks so happy. She looks confident, right? <laughs> I'm all about positivity. And you have to build self-confidence. A lot of times in business and in life, uh, whether you're going and working for someone else and helping build their business as a CEO or as a CFO or as an employee, uh, we sometimes get down and get um, unsure of our own uh, abilities and our own um, uh, tools that we're offering to the market. Um, at the same time, we hit a pandemic, right? So, man, is my business going to survive? Am I going to still have a job? Um, how am I going to be able to eat, right? You know, all these things are things that kind of toil at us all the time. But I think if you're in a position when you're working for a job, if you've attained a certain level of success uh, in your business, or if you have um, um, gotten to a certain place where you could build up your business, it's because of people are trusting you uh, and you were qualified to do the job. If you're a business owner and someone paid you for something, that's because they trust you. The money is just a transaction that corresponds to trust and a chance. Be confident in that and build off of that. But I like to take even time to build my own mind up, build my own self-confidence up. I like to make sure that even for me being educated about the things that I know and have learned for 20 some years I've been in video and marketing and advertising, uh, even though I got the baby face, I started young, right? But I still have to build my own confidence up because we get unsure, that's part of human nature. But part of the key uh, in terms of the surviving, I think is also building self-confidence, okay? All right, next. Reach out for help. Look at her, she's happy, but she's reaching, right? Her hand is up, she's reaching. <laughs> Reach out for help. At this time right now, everybody is isolated or at home. So um, things are hard, but more importantly, if you need to get to someone, it's probably easier right now than it ever has been before to reach out. You know they're watching emails. <laughs> they got nowhere to go, right? <laughs> you know they're by their phones. That's how they're communicating with their people and employees. Our email boxes may be filled up, but at the same time, you can reach out for help. And I think that corresponds to networking. Right, networking has taken on a different form. These virtual meetings with the Westmore Chamber of Commerce has, has been, they've been excellent. They have been excellent. But people are reaching out virtually and now people don't have to walk there. But you can reach out for help. Anyone on this call, screenshot their names, hit them up, right? Reach out for help, right? Anyone that you see that can add value to your life, whether they're here, LA, New York, reach out for help and explain what you need help with and people will respond because we're all human. I think people also want to respond to helping others, especially, again, in the middle of a pandemic. But we are business owners, and we need each other to survive, okay? Reach out for help. She's reaching. Won't y'all reach? All right, here we go. Next one. I'm almost done here. Tell your story. Look at that beautiful kid. Kids love stories, right? Kids love stories. Tell your story. This goes back to also being yourself and understanding your unique value proposition. When it comes to building self-confidence, it helps to tell people why, what you're passionate about. For me, I love talking about video. I love talking about marketing. I love talking about um, adding value to other people 
uh, and then marketing, graphic design, web development are just ways that we add value. Um, but you have to be able to tell your story. When you tell your story, um, sometimes we become more confident because we're talking about something that we understand. But don't be afraid to put yourself out there for whoever will listen, right? Tell that CEO, tell uh, someone in news, you know, tell your mom, tell your dad, tell your aunt, tell your cousins, tell somebody. But the more you practice telling your story, the better it will be in terms of marketing yourself to other businesses and brands. Okay. And the last one, look at that. Love above all. Isn't that a beautiful black baby, right? The main thing I want to say right here is you have to love everybody. Respect everybody. When we respect people, I think people feel that, right? Uh, no matter what um, situation you run into when you're meeting people and networking, everybody has something to offer. Everybody's opinion is important. I think if you have a love for people, I think that will shine through in your business. And I think it helps to promote self-confidence. It helps you to uh, be more sure in that you don't have to worry about someone judging you because, hey, we're all human beings. I'm loving everybody, but I'm also telling you about my business, my value proposition. So those are my tips. Um, you know, and if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. But uh, thank you for having me. I appreciate the time. I love this, Terrence. Amazing. You know, like you said, we're all human and we all have these things that we need to think about all the time. I love this, you know, building self-confidence. Sometimes we're not always the most confident person, right? Especially during a pandemic, we've got so many things that are coming at us, a lot of stresses, mm -hmm. you know, that are unusual and different in our lives that we've never had before. Sure. But I love that leaning on doubling down on yourself, reaching out for help right now, um, telling your story, being authentic. This is beautiful. I love this. Great inspiration and words of wisdom for this morning. Yeah, this no is problem. fabulous. And you're right. Love above all, you know? All right. yeah. yeah. And if that shows, that's, you know, that's, that's terrific. I love that so much. Thank you, Terrence. Beautifully, beautifully done and executed. And uh, thank you for Thanks your for inspiration that. this morning. Well, no, thank you for having me. Really appreciate it. Awesome. So I'm excited to introduce Mark Hollander. He had a little technical problem. I think he's back online. Uh, Mark Hollander is Director of Client Relations and Marketing at Whitfield and Eddy Law. So take it away, Mark. Uh, good morning, everybody. And uh, thanks for the patience with the technical issues. Um, anyway, I appreciate being a part of this today and really enjoyed hearing everyone talk so far. And I'm definitely going to try to stay in my lane. Uh, Whitfield Eddy is a professional services firm, law firm based in Des Moines, Iowa. Uh, but we work with clients throughout the state of the Iowa and the country as well. So I'm going to pop up here and see if I can do my buzzword bingo here. And I've got seven minutes to go here as far as what we're going to talk about today. And uh, buzzword bingo being hopefully um, taking spots from other people of great ideas they've done so far and things that I can uh, add value to as far as our firm. Um, first off, what I'd like to uh, mention here is uh, follow the leader and do that practice uh, thought leadership. Um, what are things that are happening within your business, within your industry, within your community that you can comment on and you can throw out there, uh, whether it is on your blog, whether it is on your website, um, the questions that you're hearing on a regular basis from your clients, make sure that you have those answers that you can share with them and look at it from the perspective of what are those questions that they're asking to you but then also respond to those questions in that question and answer format uh, on your website. Uh, it's something that Google really likes to see uh, instead of just that really short snippet of 200, 300 words uh, about a topic or a matter. Go into a little bit more long form of the way that you can go and put your firm first and your experience and your leadership first into that. Um, one of the things that we've, practice as well with the last couple months is try to go to the point where we're hitting about 600 words or so. Uh, that's something that Google really likes to see and it gives a lot more depth and emphasis to uh, the things that you can do to help your clients and help the community as well. Follow the leader. We're hearing from so many different people these last 160 days. I had to go and ask uh, my uh, smart speaker this morning, how many days have I been home now? And it's been over 160 days now. Uh, it's one of those things that you're trying to live that quote unquote best life and uh, try to learn something new 
and it's a struggle. It sucks for all of us. I'm just going to be honest with it. There's days that I have a hard time with it, but you've got to go and put it into its place. Uh, throughout this time, I've made that commitment to myself and my firm uh, to get in and learn Zoom quickly. I knew nothing of Zoom before the pandemic. And now I'm the resident Zoom ninja for our firm, advocating for it so that way we can use it correctly uh, within our industry, but then also use it to connect with our clients and our staff. Uh, digital. Thankfully, we had some pretty big digital projects going on before this started, and I've been able to really leverage my time uh, to go and be that thought leader within our firm and within our industry to go and push those things forward. Uh, public speaking. Um, we've been using Zoom uh, like none other to engage with our clients because the clients really come first in this time of the pandemic. So backing up to that thought leadership, uh, how many ways can we reach out to them on a regular basis and let them know what's happening in the industry and what can we do to help them? Um, we track that information. So everybody that signs into our webinar, guess what? We're watching to see if they're still following up with us on those matters uh, that we discussed there. And bingo, that stuff happens. So those are the kinds of things we really want to be watching. But also that coaching and education piece. Um, I've been spending a lot of time, uh, once again, on digital, but following other thought leaders and firms that I really respect in the marketplace. Uh, Back the last time that we had a significant downturn in business and the economy, I got an MBA. So what's that way you can get an MBA for yourself right now, whether it's reading, studying, taking some online classes to go and bolster those skills that you need. Uh, getting social and getting active. Um, it's looking at the people that are doing it right. Um, I look at Jacob Rep. He's doing it right in our community. Sid Jewarker, he's doing it right in our community. Leverage those guys. Watch what they're doing. It's not rocket science. Do it yourself. Make that commitment to spend some time and get online. Share those comments. Share the things that you're doing in this community. The buy local campaigns. Uh, if you go out and buy some gift cards for some friends, family, people that you work with, share those things online to make sure that the local business gets the extra buzz for you. Um, read, like, share, buy a subscription, and thank a journalist. Relating back to these last couple things, make sure you're doubling down on spending time reading and watching the news and helping yourself go and be that more educated consumer. What are your clients looking for? What are people in the communities looking for? So that way you can go and answer those questions relating back to those first couple pieces, whether it is thought leadership online uh, or talking to your clients. Um, but more than anything, it's asking the people that you work with, whether it's internal, external, clients in the community, uh, friends, family, how are you doing? And things that you can do to at least just be there and listen to them as much as anything, because that's what's gonna help us get all together and through this uh, pandemic situation, uh, but then also build our businesses and these relationships, because networking has changed 150,000% than what it was beforehand, but it's this stuff right now that's gonna put us in the lead as far as individuals and businesses in this community. Um, last but not least, I say this every day. I work for lawyers, I work for CPA. They're not going to school to market themselves, but guess what? You can learn how to do it. You can read, you can study, you can get that coaching, you can just talk with somebody who's doing it. How can I be a better marketer? As a marketing professional, I don't always have the answers for what to do, but that's where I lean on people that either know what's happening in the marketplace or can help me work through my decision-making processes. I've had to make some very tough decisions as far as budgeting and things to do this year, but I have people that I've worked with for the last 20 years in this community that I can reach out to and say, help me through this. What can I do to make this work? But also some really crazy ideas, things that I don't think would work in a normal uh, perspective uh, are things that I'm executing on right now. Uh, and I'm really excited to uh, make them happen. But guess what? I'm out of time and it hasn't happened yet. So uh, reach out to me separately and I'd love to talk to you about those uh, fun things that are happening. Thank you so much, Mark. Gosh, I've known you for many years and it's just wonderful to see you here this morning and wonderful presentation. You know, if I think about the presentation so far, you know, they can be applied for your business, but they can also be applied to you and your personal brand, right? So 
a lot of great things that we can use for ourselves individually right now. Just tremendous information. Yeah, I, and the interesting, I didn't know about, about that with Google, that they like the 600 word, the long form does better traction on Google. So that's really terrific tip. And everybody is a marketer, yes, don't forget it. Everybody is, love that. Thank you so much, Mark. I am now excited to introduce Therese Wilagi. Therese is on our executive board at the West Des Moines Chamber. We are so honored to have her, yes, here this morning. Uh, Therese is Chief Marketing and Communications Officer at Merchants Bonding Company. Take it away, Therese. Thank you, Catherine. Well, while I'm pulling this up, let me um, say that Merchants Bonding Company is in the property and casualty industry. A lot of people might not know that, but we, we specialize in uh, surety bonding and surety bonding is like construction bonding. So just want to let people know, give you a little bit of what we're all about at Merchants so you kind of understand the space that we're in. So everything's been changing rapidly for us, just like everyone else. We have offices across the country. We're the 14th largest in our space in the, in the United States. And uh, we're all learning from each other, what's working, what's not. I want to give a shout out to Mark Hollander because he and I are working on an event together and because of the pandemic, we have been able to uh, reach that, have that events reach go far and wide from what we have in the past. So there, there are silver linings here. Let me forward this. See, I'm the old lady here. I'm using plain old PowerPoint. The other guys have these cool video, cool pictures and I just have plain old PowerPoint. Anyway, so our pandemic pivot, four main themes, the digital experience, relevant content, personalization, and community giving. And let me talk about digital experience for some, just for a second. I mean everything from events, to sales visits, to your ads, to online, uh, for content. I asked my team, I said, what are the three big things you think? And then the first thing one of them said was content, 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 has to be relevant, and you can't be sending it just to send it. It, you can't add to the noise because people are being inundated with Zoom calls and emails and everybody's spin to digital. So it has to be relevant to them. And that's where personalization comes in. If you have not started collecting data on your best customers, and I don't care if you do that with a pen and paper, if you haven't started to figure out how to personalize your communications with those people, you need to start. And you need to start you know, gathering that data and using the data to drive your your communications. And also we spend to community giving, which has been really, really enhanced our relationships that we already had. So let me show you something here real quick. This is from August of 2020, United States B2B digital ad spending. See what, see where that's at? That is going up, up, up in 2020, even more in 2021. The world is spinning to digital. Just so you can see where the spaces are, financial services is where we are, tech, other, you can see where the spending is happening out there. Here's one I want to tell, want to point out is by device. So see the gray is mobile. And of course, everybody's been talking about mobile spending and it is in that great, you can see how it's grown year over year. But I want to point something out to you. Look at where desktop and laptop computers are. See, look at that, that they had kind of flattened out and now it's growing again, and let me show you why. Over the top advertising, they call it OTT. It is all the advertising that you're seeing on Hulu and YouTube and Netflix and Sling and all those other things. And that used to be, uh, you know, even a year ago, people talked about that with Gen Z and millennials. Now, everybody's talking about that with everybody. I tell you right now, that ad space is filled with from what I've seen, it's filled with ads for uh, Teresa Greenfield and and uh, and Joni Ernst, and so that <laughs> there there'll be after November there'll be spots there. So let me talk about digital experience. I said virtual events, sales calls, customer service. If your customer service, if you haven't checked your digital virtual customer service and made sure that it is responsive, you need to do it. Your email, your social social including linkedin you know use the free stuff you got free stuff use it media i mean traditional media there i think that everybody needs to take a look with everybody stuck at home you need to take another look at traditional media and what they are doing print media television even local television some of that can be very affordable in certain in certain buys 
and it's something that you should look at, especially if you've got a local business. That is, you could buy a slot in the early morning news on Monday morning and Wednesday morning, and people will think they're seeing your spot all the time. Also, I want to take a look at your website. Your website's a very important part. So, I just put a picture of Merchant's website up there. The thing about the website is, is that it's your 24-7 doors, right? This is your business open 24-7, and you need to have the digital experience be what you want it to be, just as if they were walking in the front door of your business. Um, I recommend that all your social, your email, your print, everything else drives your traffic back here. Whatever you're asking them to do, whatever call to action you have, drive them back to your website. And then when they get here, have the experience be fantastic. Uh, make sure it's device friendly, of course. You want it to look good on mobile and on you know, iPads and things. And you want to make sure that, you, that they can read it. I know that sometimes it's the most beautiful picture in the world and you have the tiniest little font and then they can't read it. So think about your audience and make sure that they can actually read what you've got on there. So relevant content. This is a picture from one of the Zoom meetings we had a long time, way back in April. Uh, this is with a bunch of our agents. We use independent agents across the country and we take their advice a lot. And if you want to think about all that's happened in pop culture since last March, April, look in the bottom right corner at my buddy Tom King, who was using the Tiger King background. And now Tiger King is so yesterday. Who cares about that anymore, right? That's how fast things are moving. I want to say that when you're using Zoom meetings like this, they need to be shorter. They need to have a defined agenda so that people know what they're getting into because they are getting Zoom weary. And uh, you want to be able to use this to reach a broader audience. I mentioned that earlier. One of the things we've been able to do with uh, our uh, educational opportunities is broaden them to a bigger audience. So one thing I want to say here too about your relevant content, some of the guys were touching on it, you know, make the most of our common experience. No, at no time in the world has our experience been so common with each other. So make the most of that because you know you can reach out and and uh, with some empathy and with your customers and they'll understand because they're going through the same thing you are think about what does your customer's customer need i think that's very important think it all the way down the line when you're trying to be relevant focus on what benefits them um, yes it's important to tell your story and know your story it's but it's really important to, to get your focus and your lens onto them and how it benefits them. Creative offers. Um, I'm just going to toss one out. If I were a retail, had a retail store, I would make sure I had a, at least a guest book for people to sign in and they can give me their email if they want. And I would give them something back right then and there to do it and then get another one right out there to have them back in again. And I would make sure I wrote down exactly what they bought so that I can offer things that go along with what they bought. And you know, I'm not a retail person, but I'm just throwing something out there. You need to be thinking about stuff like that. If you're selling a product, you wanna sell with hard ROI, return on investment, what are the numbers? Why is this something I should buy now? Not too much, I already mentioned it. Zoom and email worry and blessed are the brief. I said, you gotta have an agenda and be brief. Get there and get done. One creative idea my staff had for people at home with their kids in the spring trying to go through school was to create a Shirty Bonds coloring book. You see that on the bottom of the screen. We made a little guy named Quilbert because the quill is our icon. And we made a coloring book that taught kids about Shirty Bonds so parents could finally at home teach their kids what the, it was that they did for a living. We spun our, our uh, Merchants University to digital. We also have looked at sponsoring podcasts called Talk Surety to Me. One thing there, I think that it's really important if you don't have enough content to create your own podcast and be your own you know, online personality, you should really seek out the influencers and other influencers in your space and sponsor them and have them talk about your product. I think that's a better way to go. Personalization. I believe that if you can still send people something that is absolutely personalized to them, that is the way to go. Right here on your screen, you're seeing the, the top of a, of a digital and print piece that we send to our top agents. 
In one section of our business, we call them our leaderboard agents. In another section, we call them our pay setter agents. Mm -hmm. Nothing goes to those top 20% of our, of our agents that is not personalized with their name on it and some personal message from us to them, person to person, not just a, a blanket email or a blanket print piece. Community giving. This is one of the things we did this summer. We did it online. We called it Solve and Support. We created a bunch of online games and everybody that got the, you know, the math problem or the find the quills correctly, we did three games over three weeks. Every time they sent in a correct answer, we gave $10 to a charity. So we gave five, ended up over the three weeks giving $500 to No Kid Hungry. $500 to the Jed Foundation and $1,500 to the Kids in Need Foundation. So I wanted to end on this. It's one of my favorite quotes, my husband's too. If you think you can or you think you can't, you are right. That's from Henry Ford. And that wraps it up for me. I hope I stayed within the time and lots of ideas there and a lot of basic block and tackle from me because a lot of that is my world. The other guys are, you can tell the creative guys from the basic block and tackle look at the data girl. So thank you very much for having me this morning. I really appreciate it. I love so many great ideas. And I love that you showed us some of your campaigns that are so unique and different. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna have to watch this whole video again. This is like incredible. I am so cute. Talk sure, surety to me. That's, that's adorable. And the coloring book. Love that and the way you give back in a unique way too is so special. Um, and I love this. I've never heard this before in my life. What does your customer's customer need? That, that is powerful. That's really, really powerful. Thank you so much, Therese. Amazing, amazing stuff. You know, and I am noticing, we have a lot of people on this Zoom this morning, but I wanted to shout out here real quick, Angela Jackson, who is on our executive board with the West Des Moines Chamber and also in head leads our diversity, inclusion, and equity committee. So I wanted to shout out to Angela this morning. Thank you for being here. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. All right. I'm excited to introduce Damaris McKee, and Damaris is Manager of Client Experience and Strategy at Arion. Take it away, Damaris. Good morning. Let me get this. Okay, so this morning I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about um, client experience. There's all kinds of facts and figures that share how client experience can increase revenue, but I really wanna focus on your interactions with brands. It can be either personally or professionally. When was the last time a brand truly delighted you? Um, so that's really kind of, that's how you establish great. That should be your baseline in any interaction that you have or any new product or service that you're working with um, to position to your clients. So you've established great. Now think about a time where a brand let you down or was just mediocre. So essentially not memorable. Now, if you were to weigh that out, what's the percent breakdown between those two categories of an experience? Someone give me a thumbs up if more than 50% of those interactions were exceptional. So that's super typical. Um, and really kind of the point of that is if you haven't designed a strategy around your client experience, you're leaving um, it up to chance and process. And that's essentially setting you up to potentially lose some of your clients in your process. So business and consumer spaces are working differently today than they were a year ago. We all know that. We're all on a Zoom call versus being in person this morning. Um, I think you know, some of those key things are remote and hybrid environments are the new normal. Eight to five is somewhat outside of kind of our everyday expectation when we interact with brands. Um, we expect a response within hours or immediately in some cases. That makes it really hard to deliver that exceptional experience unless you haven't created a design that supports that. Expectations have also changed. So quality features need support. Um, if you deliver on what you say you will, but it isn't in line with your customer's expectation or it isn't consistent, you're acting on risk. Um, so then the last thing is really kind of positioning and what is that value add? If you're not creating value for your clients um, and everything that you do, it, 
it doesn't matter how great your email is. Um, if your prospect doesn't read emails at that time, you've missed an opportunity. Um, the slip gated content that you have on your site, if it isn't seamless to navigate um, and someone doesn't understand what that upfront value is, you've also missed an opportunity. There's a lot of changes happening right now for your clients and you really don't want to leave those experiences up to chance. So lots of brands have been fine tuning their interactions that they have with their customers. They're making it easier to do business with them. Um, you know, brands take calls differently than they did five years ago. When you call into a Nordstrom's, you're verifying who you are versus telling them who you are. This has gone from a newness to almost an expectation. Um, even mass services, such as, you know, buying a suit from Nordstrom's online or over the phone, it's personalized. And that wasn't necessarily the expectation of consumers in the past. They're also collecting information along the way, and this is really what's driving their promotion efforts. Those companies have designed an experience that builds brand loyalty with their customers, and they're reinforcing it with every interaction. That leads you to spend more. Um, many companies have done this you know, initially to speed up process and reduce cost, but it's had an effect. It's helped build trust, um, collect better data, and lead to better positioning. So, Again, this isn't a Nordstrom commercial, um, but when I place an order over the phone in a pinch, they run through my total, they confirm shipping options, and they ask if I wanna use my card on file. I say yes and we're done. Um, the last time I made a call for an urgent order, it was a minute and 42 seconds. All of the data that they had on me on file and accessible to that customer service rep was designed to support my experience. The transaction was seamless. So another one of those great players, Amazon, um, they are constantly bringing us in and it's often kind of one of the first places that shoppers can look for an item. Um, I would even say sometimes when they're in a retail store already where they could also purchase that item. Um, customers have a choice today and Amazon has built a model on trust with consistency. You're interacting with different sellers, but what you see is Amazon. The relationship you have is with Amazon, not necessarily that specific seller. The competitive landscape has changed. 10 years ago, you know, you wouldn't be in the same position. So what I'm trying to get at is the relationship between buyer and seller. It matters. As a buyer, you want someone to understand your needs and make it easy. For marketers, this means, you know, focusing on why your customers choose your business and refining their experience because every interaction matters. So the next one, so we all take, um, you know, different focuses in our business, but it's really easy to start thinking from a client-centric focus. Um, you don't need to be Amazon or Nordstrom to leverage your client's information to better support them, earning their business and keeping that business. The data you look at should not just be focused on who you reach out to, but also how and when, and what's the best way to reach them. All of the data in the world cannot position your product or service for success. Anyone who's worked for or with a consultant has probably had a similar experience. Um, understanding what your data is really saying is up to you. There's so much chaos and it's really how you set yourself apart from the competition. So the data you use to make decisions is super important. A lot of companies are good at one of these categories, but few are good at both. Um, so the market factors are on one side, so that's traditional aspects. It's market data, um, you know, what's the market doing? What is it gonna do? What the competitive intelligence you have on file? But then there's the client factor side. Instead of focusing your agenda on a market, by filling in the gaps with your clients. What I have found, and I know a lot of other companies have found this too, is that this is where you can really leverage success and where you can show that you have a deep understanding of your clients and that's how you support um, their needs with your products and services. So Southwest Airlines, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with this. Um, it's all over the internet, HBR articles, any type of business student has also probably seen this. Southwest created a different kind of airline in the 70s and it's been profitable for 45 years in a row. How many airlines do you know of that have been profitable for 45 years in a row? Southwest has always focused on the experience 
And, you know, looking at this document, it shows like this is what they're positioning against. It's not other airlines, um, but it's what the client is looking for, what their customers need when they will be using their services. At the end of the day, everything points back to how you make your customers feel. So the top three takeaways um, that we've walked through are super simple and they really have a tremendous opportunity to help your business grow and help you focus your efforts so that you get out of um, you know, your interactions what you need. So number one, raw data is not enough. Really know your clients and provide superior interactions. I've seen this as a theme in each presentation this morning so far. What matters to them is what should matter to you. It only takes one bad experience. Leverage expectations and insights from your existing customers to create the right experience every time. Um, PwC did a survey I was looking at this morning. One in three customers will leave a brand they love after just one bad experience, while 92% will completely abandon a company after two or three negative interactions. That's huge. Indifference is not a free pass. That's putting yourself in a risky category. Um, and the last thing is that your clients really are critical to your success. Always add value for them. Um, when you stop adding value, you are irrelevant and replaceable. Um, when you don't add that value, you haven't earned their business and you're just weakening your position with them. Thank you. Gosh. Damaris, that was so, so interesting. Just one bad client experience has that much of an impact on your business. Yes. That is very, very interesting. And that was a study by PwC, did you say? Is that what they, yeah. Yep. And, wow. you know, you can't always control if something, you know, something happens, things happen. But I think mm -hmm. that having a plan, being ready to act on it, is really what's going to set you apart. For sure. That's amazing. And, you know, and let's say there is one bad experience, you know, the remedy to that is to act swiftly, quickly, you know, be transparent, apologize, do all those things to recover because, you know, you don't want any more of those, but how you recover too, I think is so important. That was amazing. Focus on the experience. I know all of us are thinking, how can we do this in our companies? How can we be like Southwest West Airlines and have 45 years in a row of, of amazing growth and, and profit and how to add value. So impactful. Thank you very much for your insights, Damaris. It's fabulous. I am excited to introduce Mark Danes. Mark is Chief Strategic Communications Offers with officer with Des Moines University and I was looking at some photos you posted on your website recently Mark about your progress for your new campus in West Des Moines it looks like things are moving along pretty beautifully thank you Catherine good morning everyone um, you know being in the cleanup slot can often be a, a gesture of disaster or weakness but uh, I think I can bring a lot of this conversation home in a brand package uh, but before I begin, uh, I'll be the outlier. I do not have a PowerPoint. I want to be memorable for that. Um, spirit of full disclosure, um, Councilman, Councilwoman Renee Hardman is on the Board of Trustees for Des Moines University. Thank you for joining us, Renee. Uh, and yes, so Grand Avenue has completed a cross to South 88th Street, and the immediate challenge was to bring the land level up about 12 feet to be level with Grand Avenue. If you drive out there, you'll see a human scale ant farm with uh, upwards of 40,000 dump truck loads of dirt being moved onto the property. Uh, and then the land shaping will begin. And then we start construction and engineering spring of next year. So a lot of exciting things going on uh, for Des Moines University, where we are and where we will be. Uh, but we're at a very, um, exciting tipping point for ourselves in terms of who we are, how our brand evolves, and the services we deliver to the world. A um, couple of uh, little tidbits. Um, I also teach brand management, organizational change, and project management uh, at the graduate level. Um, before DMU, I was up at University of North Dakota, where I taught four different courses on the subject. Um, I would say it's a little bit dated, but not terribly. Uh, has anybody read Romancing the Brand by Tim Halloran? It's a fantastic quick read book with great case studies. And Maris is nodding her head, thank you. 
um, just wonderful cases, including uh, the most interesting man in the world, Dos Equis, Coca-Cola, other big brands. Run, don't walk, it's a great read. Amazon will bring it quickly. Um, and also I was raised in the business uh, years ago by the Forum Corporation out of Boston. They are one of the top consultancies in organizational change management, uh, market positioning, and strategic planning. And they coined the phrase strategic speed. So I'm gonna address in the next few minutes here, uh, two things very broadly. What it means to manage a brand platform and tying into Maris, she stole some of my thunder, um, always having a customer driven filter on because we're all customers of something, right? We're customers of different services, products, each other. And we always wanna have the best possible feeling in every transaction. So as, as Terrence uh, kicked it off and, and cited, the core of the brand experience is that unique value or unique selling proposition, right? What is it that we sell that is special? And when I first joined DMU, um, while I'd worked in healthcare and education, I needed to learn. I needed to learn about the experience. And so we started with focus groups of students. Why did you choose Des Moines University? Um, where did the brand promise come through or did it fail? And the one thing that came through, and you see it on our website, um, was the feeling students got on campus. Students told us, this is documented, you know, I went to a medical school in New York and the tour guide basically said, don't come here, it's horrible. Um, here, our student ambassadors talk about their experiences with the faculty in the community, especially now with uh, the need to address COVID and, and community crises. And students to a person said, it just felt different. I felt welcomed. I felt like you were serious about my future. And as Mara said, it's about how we make those customers feel, okay? So I'll dial back several years. I cut my teeth in public relations on Tylenol II, 1987. Uh, incredibly difficult time. Thank God the internet was not with us uh, because we had a filter of time. Um, but we were in a war room for two months trying to determine if Johnson & Johnson was going to survive and decide on the action. So the scene is New Brunswick, New Jersey, the CEO's suite, six of us brilliant ones from Burson and Mars Deller, and lawyers and other advocates for the corporation, investor relations, and we're just cranking the, the, the billings, right? And we're coming up with brilliant ideas. And after about an hour and a half of this, the CEO just stood up and walked across to a window and looked out at the world and the room went silent. He turned around and he said, I want primetime news tonight. This was three o'clock in the afternoon. And we're gonna keep it simple, folks. We're gonna tell the truth. And then we're gonna make a guarantee that this will never happen again. So Maris, you're right. You get one, maybe two chances, but this is where brand stewardship comes in. Look at what's happened with COVID. The strong brands, the brands that are consistent, who understand their unique value proposition, who have a clear sense of what their service is, are the ones who are thriving and will be here for the long term. DMU is in its 122nd year, has gone through many different changes. This move to West Des Moines will be our fourth move. And our tagline that we created three years ago is creating opportunities. And that's very relationship driven, right? We're creating opportunities for our board members, for our donors, for our faculty, our students, our community members, and I hope for each of you, either through clinical services, education, scholarly research, but we didn't get there easily. We took about six months in 2017, and Ms. Hardman will remember this, we did a campus-wide wall-to-wall study of our whole SWOT analysis, right? Looked in the mirror and said, where are our warts? What are our attributes? And how do we build this brand? Uh, I do have to give a shout out to Pascal Stapleton and Lord out of Philadelphia. They were our agency of record. They helped guide this process. I was new to DMU, and so we knew we wanted to take an objective approach. We dissected the university. 
and came up with a very clean, consistent um, execution for our brand. And now it's all about the people, right? Each of us have talked about the value of content, the value of the story. Absolutely true. People, as I say, at coming to look at DMU, ought to be able to answer the question, I want to be like so-and-so because. So that's packaging our alumni, packaging our faculty, packaging our board members and our students to tell their stories. And over the last three years, we've gotten much better at capturing those video and narrative stories of our people. Because we know when prospective students or faculty members are searching for their next home or their education partner, they want to see themselves. They want to see themselves as successful in their venture. So as we've heard, that brand experience, it needs to be relevant, it needs to be urgent, and needs to be consistent. Uh, one thing that Tim Halloran said in Romancing the Brand in his, one of his focus group studies of Diet Coke, he said at one point a young woman just slapped her hand on the table and said, I know exactly why I love this product. It's like my boyfriend. It's there in my toughest times. It's there in my happiest times. And that's in the book. Um, so those big brands uh, deliver consistently and they listen to their customers. So I advise everyone, whenever I talk about branding, at least once a year, reach out to customers in both a one-on-one -on -one format and in focus groups and ask the tough questions. What are we doing well? Why do you work with us? And what can we improve? What do you need me to do more of or be better at? Because those questions in their rawest form will help your business grow or organization, can be any kind of organization, nonprofit, law, engineering. Having that honest relationship with your customer base equals success. Um, Therese, you're absolutely right. Content, content, content. Got to figure out how to package that content, keep it relevant and exciting. Love your example, especially the coloring book. But use, use your customer filters. And especially in our world today, and this is a core tenet of ours, is understanding the value of diversity, equity, and inclusion. Our world is wholly different from two years ago. So with that, I've got the Bailey hook, and I will end it so we might be able to have some questions. Thank you, everybody, very much. Thank you so much, Mark. That was amazing. I love how you tied everybody in together, wrapped all of this up, all of these experts. I, we could do this for hours and hours more. I mean, this is just a tip of the iceberg. And I, I love your story. So interesting. You were there when Tylenol, oh my gosh, with Burston Marsteller. So many interesting stories. That, that is amazing. And thank you for the book recommendation. Going to buy it today, Romancing the Brand. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so that's a, that's a must read. I've, I've not read that. Thank you, Mark. Just beautiful. And again, congratulations on your new campus and all the progress and, and uh, just uh, really, really incredible. So what a wonderful asset that you will be and uh, the entire university for the West Des Moines community. So thank you so thank much. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, that wraps up our program. And I'm going to give everybody the gift of time, which don't we love that when we have more time in our day because something went shorter than, than we thought. I really want to thank everybody again, Brandon Bingham, Terrence Thames, Mark Hollander, Therese Wilagi, Damaris McGee, Mark Danes, and our wonderful sponsors, Arian and Security National Bank, that helped to make this program possible. You know, we, we had no idea that this was going to be such a big success, but we are thrilled. We love the Business Survival Toolkit. We'll be carrying it into later in the year and also into next year. So uh, stay tuned for more uh, to add to the series. Just a little bit of uh, what's coming up at the Chamber of Commerce. We are always working our tails off here to support our local businesses and doing everything we can right now, especially during COVID. Uh, we have some things coming up. So mark your calendar. August 26th is our Mentoring for Women event. And we have several of our mentors here on the line today. So, so happy about that. Uh, September 9, we have our first responders breakfast and part of the proceeds goes to a new organization. It's called the West Des Moines Cadets. So, uh, so mark your calendar for that. September 10, Jamie Pollard is gonna be joining us at our monthly luncheon. 
and stay tuned for press on something called the Best of the West. It's our first annual awards honoring about 50 companies, organizations, businesses from small to large. We are recognizing the best that West Des Moines has to offer and we'll be announcing today the winner of our logo contest. So again, you know, we talked a lot about visioning and telling your story. And again, our vision for the West Des Moines Chamber of Commerce is we want to make West Des Moines the best suburban city in America to live, work, and play. And with everybody's help, we will be doing that. So I really appreciate, again, everybody's time, our incredible team. Thank you, Bailey, for running our, uh, our, our event today. Amazing job. And uh, have a wonderful, wonderful afternoon. And like we like to say, stay positive and test negative. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. This has been great. Goodbye. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much, everybody. Thanks, Catherine. Hey, are you going to put everybody's uh, information out so when I have